It's amazing how nobody can ever agree on anything. There's always going to be dissenting opinions. There's always going to be people that have some shit to say, which is why, you know, was it George Carlin talked about just how important it is to truly not give a fuck about your life. Like, who gives a shit what other people think sometimes? And you're amazed once you adapt, adopt that mindset, like how much better life can be. Um, and I look at this situation, which played out over the past couple of days involving the Rock's daughter and the decision for her name and what she announced her WWE name to be as a perfect example of this. Like here she is all of 20 years of age. She didn't ask to be the Rock's daughter. She didn't ask for everybody's fucking opinion on what her name, her ring name was going to be. And yet everybody's all too busy about having a damn opinion about it. Now, granted, there's nothing wrong with folks having an opinion about stuff. We're all entitled to one. Like assholes. Everybody's got one and the opinions stink all the same. But, like you see people talking about how stupid this is. Because she's going to go by the name of, what is it, Ava Rain? Oh my God, I can't believe they're distancing yourself you from your father. I can't believe they're doing this. I can't believe that they're not going to refer to you by the last name of Johnson or tie into the rock name in some type of way or the Maya Via name in some type of way and blah, blah, blah. Skip de skip and whoop de woo. And I want to say this really quickly. Like in the toxic, stupid cesspool that wrestling social media and the wrestling internet bubble can be, I give Simone Johnson, I believe that's her name, right? Uh, the Rock's daughter. I give her a tremendous amount of credit for the way that she handled it. You know, I'm going to quote her here, to kind of mash together a couple of tweets. Forgive me, but I want to provide the proper context. Um, she says, and I quote, I probably sound like a broken record, and hopefully this is the last I'll mention this. But I don't understand why people being portrayed as separate individuals from their family name is such a heated topic. A name doesn't discredit any prior accomplishments from any family. I could build my entire career around my father and people would still bash me anyways, unquote. Bravo! Bra frickin' O. This is an outstanding response. You're basically dealing with the stupidity of what does the name even matter at this point? You're talking about the fact that literally, no matter what you were going to do, somebody was going to piss and moan, bitch and complain about it. And that's absolutely true. So for somebody at 20 years of age to have this kind of bearing, to have this type of presence, to be able to have this type of awareness, this level of maturity, this level of most importantly of all self-control in the way that she responds is outstanding. A lot of adults that could be learning something from this young woman. You really could. Now, let me say this. A name is just a name, but sometimes it is every bit of the game with the name, and sometimes it doesn't really matter. And I could certainly say, like, it's okay if she doesn't go by something that directly ties into The Rock's name or ties into High Chief Peter Maivia's name. You know, I still think it's fascinating. She's what, a fourth generation wrestler? Like how many fourth generation wrestlers have we had on like the bigger stages of wrestling? I'm trying to rack my brain. Like how many of them have we really had? Fourth generation, specifically in WWE. Who else is there? I'm just wondering. Like that's crazy. It runs that deep in that family. But... You know, the fact that she doesn't go by that name automatically doesn't have to be a problem. If they do too much to distance her from that family name and that legacy, that's where I kind of have the concern. That's where it feels like it's kind of stupid. Now, if she is truly trying to 100% make a name on her own and say that I don't want to be associated with that, people can know what that's fine, but I want to truly make it on my own merits, that's great, but let's be honest here. It's not like there wasn't a lot of nepotism involved with her getting that opportunity to begin with. I mean, let's cut the bullshit here. I'm not knocking it because, like, how many other people take advantage of uh, familial and friendship connections 
take advantage of nepotism just like this to get their opportunity. So often in life, it's not about how good you are. It's something that's about who you know, who you blow, who you screw, whatever the case might be. Let's not pretend like this is 100% solely based off of her merits. I mean, give me a fucking break. We gotta be really naive to believe that. And even if she was to say that, I would tell her, that's bullshit. Come on, let's be real here. But I, I certainly appreciate, like, while you're taking advantage of the opportunity that the legacy that you have as part of your family heritage has provided you, that you are trying to make a name for yourself and not just solely live off of that. And I really admire that. I really respect that. But it's the, it's the name association with the family that to me is the much bigger issue. Now, I could certainly say, hey, you look at somebody like a Charlotte Flair. Obviously, that bitch has been forced to the moon and fucking back several times over. Like they've... Literally, the WWE has such, done such a Cena-like propaganda job in recent years that people actually think that Charlotte Flair is a great talent. That's how bad this shit has run and how deep it's run. But what they did do is they gave her the Charlotte Flair name. They've always associated with her father and mentioned her father and her family history on TV. Like, that type of name association matters. It absolutely makes a difference. Look at Bray Wyatt. He started off down what FCW and that NXT crap as Husky Harris. Now when you say what's in a name, Husky Harris, especially for a company like WWE, you know that's pretty much a loser name and a loser ass freaking gimmick. You knew it was. Even if some of you have a bit of a soft spot for it, you know that that's the type of gimmick that you're given and it feels like you're instantly buried. Like if you're Bastion Booger or Mantar or Aldo Montoya, the Portuguese man of war. And like these are loser ass gimmicks that you cannot overcome. They are loser ass names that you just won't be able to get past. But at least with WWE, eventually when it was Bray Wyatt and everything else, like they would mention the history. They would mention the Wyndham Mulligan name. Like they would mention the association. And even when you look at the name Bray Wyatt, like... It could sound like a dumb name or it could sound like a great name. It's what's done with it that matters. It's the packaging. It's the gimmick. And that's what's so critical here. That's what matters. It's not the damn name. It's not like it was, let's say, a Joe Henning type of situation. Like Michael McGillicuddy was a horrendous name. When I can rhyme his wrestling name with McGill is shitty, you got a problem. And it felt like way too often they would go to great lengths to not closely associate him with his father, Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig. And it felt like for a young man that needed that lift, that needed that additional extra, they fucking didn't do it enough. And by the time he becomes Curtis Axel and he does some different stuff, it's too late. Randy Orton, they always made sure to closely associate him with the Randy or, or with the Orton name. They'd have his dad, Ace Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. Like, he would appear and he would be associated with his son. They would make sure that they mentioned that. Like, so, when you look at some of these cats, like, you could say, well, you got the Usos. They don't call them Rikishi 2 and Rikishi 3. No, they don't. It's about what you do with them, how you package them, how you present them. That's way more important than the name. Like, the name of, I think it's Ava Rain. If I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. I don't mean to, but. Like, the name in and of itself is inconsequential. Because it certainly doesn't sound like one of those names that's just so ridiculously stupid like Michael McGillicuddy that you sit there and say, well, that's, that, that person's buried from get-go, from Jump Street. It's about what you do with the gimmick and the presentation that is associated with that name. That's what matters most. And I think when you look at her, like, we will see, time will tell. But for somebody that hadn't even really done anything in WWE yet, is just starting their career, like, damn, why the fans have to bother her so much? I mean, my shit, like I said, everybody's got an opinion, but y'all couldn't have kept that shit to your damn selves. <laughs> He's in there poking in the bear and poking at her on Twitter about it, like, get a fucking life. Yes, I would be concerned if they didn't choose to closely associate her in terms of her on-screen presence with her family history, like that would be moronic. Why would you not want to associate her 
with one of the biggest stars in WWE history, arguably the biggest movie star in the fucking world, a fourth generation wrestler that name carries some sachet and weight. Like, why would you? But like, as I talked about some of these examples, and there are many notable others as well, where you talk about the names and they're coming from family of wrestling, like sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes they go, the WWE's went way out of their way to associate, you know, these second, third generation folks directly with their family in the name. But sometimes they don't and it can absolutely work. It absolutely can. Like, they don't call Roman Reigns the freaking, you know, Wild Samoan 3 or anything like that. You know, but they make sure that they present our tribal chief in a way where you're talking about his heritage and his lineage and it leads you to take him seriously and acknowledge him. So, yeah, the whole name shit for The Rock's daughter, I thought personally was pretty dumb. If you're concerned about the not associating her with the family history, I get that. Because why would you not want to take every advantage you could? It's kind of like when I looked at Bron Breaker. And instead of calling him Bronson Steiner or saying, hey, you know what? Let's go a little different. Let's call him Bronco Steiner. And you could even call his thing like the Bronco Breaker. Like you could do so many things with that. Like, not only did they change the name, and like, Braun Breaker sounds like kind of a dumb name. And I always thought, I think it's dumb because of the fact that when you hear the name Braun, you're going to think, LeBron James! LeBron James! That's what you're going to think of when you hear Braun. But the fact that they would go out of their way for a long time to not even really reference him as being kin of, in the son of Rick Steiner or being related to Scott Steiner is really stupid. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Why wouldn't you give them every opportunity that they could? So even when I thought it was stupid, like, to get away from the Steiner name, and I still agree for it in that case, I think sometimes it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Like, there it felt like it absolutely makes sense. Because for Christ's sakes, he even reminds you of Rick and Scott for crying out fucking loud. Like, why would you not closely associate him with that? But it's mo even more so about the presentation or the lack of association with the family lineage. Why wouldn't you want to utilize that in a way to help get your talent over, to get them opportunities, to get people that at least did consider taking them seriously? That's a piece that I don't get. So we'll see what happens with her. As she looks to begin her WWE journey, shall be interesting. Also, as a note, it means I'm really freaking old because I'm old enough to be her dad. God, life sucks sometimes. But fuck it, whatever. Um, I wish her well, but like, we'll see what happens. I hate to be the, the guy that says, let's see how it plays out. But in this case, it truly is. Like, if you're judging based solely off of the way a name sounds, like that's really stupid in a lot of cases. Unless it's somebody like Husky Harris or Michael McGillicuddy, then you knew it was always done and they were destined to fail until they got repackaged.